Hi all, this is Anjali and in this video I am going to discuss a few more output questions for C++. Like in the last video we have discussed the first four questions of this worksheet which has all previous year output questions and now I am going to continue with question number five. So question number five as you can see is again related to strings. So we have the header files iostream and ctype.h included in this and from here we have this function secret declared which receives a character array as an argument and an integer n. Then this is the initial value of the string sms and we call the function secret from here. We pass the sms and an integer value 2. Initially your string is report tme so 0 position is for r then at position 1 we have capital E at position 2 is capital P and then so on O R T M E and at the end we have a special character called null. Now when this function is called the starting address like say if this R is stored at memory location 100 that is passed to MSG. So MSG is also pointing to the same string. So whatever changes I make in MSG in this function they are going to be reflected back in main over here. Now initially we have taken C as 0 in this and it checks if message C that is message 0 is not equal to null. Yes it is true because message 0 is R which is not equal to null. Condition is true. So we get inside the loop and it checks if C mod 2 is 0. 0 mod anything is 0. So it's true. It's true and it executes this line which says that we should override the value of message 0 and what we should put there is message 0 plus n. Now when you get questions like this for string it is very important where this plus n is. If this is inside the square brackets that means you have to pick up a character from that many positions ahead in the same string like if it was 0 and n is 2. So if it is 0 plus 2 that means I have to pick the character at position 2 and put it at position 0. But it is not within the square bracket it's outside. So message 0 is R, R plus 2. That means in alphabetical order, I have to add 2 to that. So P, Q, R, S, T. So after R, I get T if I add 2 to R. Since it's a small R, so after adding 2, I'm going to get small T at place of R. So this will change. MSG 0 will change and it will have a character which is 2 ahead in the alphabets. It will not go to the else if and else because the first condition is true. So we move on over here, C++ makes C as 1. So at message 1, we have capital E. 1 mod 2 is not equal to 0, so it goes to else if. And it checks here, else if is upper message 1. Yes, E is capital, so this condition is true. And if it is true, what we are doing over here is, message C is equal to 2 lower message C. That means this needs to be converted to lower letter, that is, this capital E converts to small e. And then we come up here again and C becomes 2. Message 2 is capital P, which is not equal to 0, uh, which is not equal to null. That's true. Then it will check 2 mod 2 is 0. Yes, it's true. It's true. That means I have to add this by 2. So P, Q, R. So this capital P will be changed to capital R because we have to move two letters ahead and else if and all will not be checked then c becomes 3 that's small o 3 mod 2 equal to 0 is false is upper is also false so it comes to the else part where it's minus n so m n o so if i go back i get m two letters back from o so since o is small m will also be small then c becomes 4 4 is r which is not equal to null 4 mod 2 is 0 true so again this r will be increased by 2 so we get small t at this place then c becomes 5 5 we have capital t at that which is not null so it is true 5 mod 2 equal to 0 is false then it checks if it is upper yes it is upper it is upper so it will be converted to a lower t so this changes to small t then C becomes 6. At message 6, I have M, which is not equal to null. True. 6 mod 2 is 0. Yeah, true. M, N, O. So, M, N, O, that means if I increase this M by 2, it becomes 
O. Then we have CS7 where we have capital E which is not equal to null. 7 mod 2 0 is false. So it comes here and checks if it is upper. Yes, it is upper. So it will be converted to the lower letter. And finally, C becomes 8 and at 8 we have null. So the condition is false. We come out of the loop. So when we come out of the loop, the function is over here. The control goes back to main and it prints the value of SMS. And this value is the modified value because whatever changes you make in the string are reflected back because string is a character array. Its base address is passed to the pointer in the function and whatever changes we make there, those changes are made on the same memory location. That's why they are reflected back. So whatever values we've got after the modification becomes my output. So these result, this is what we have changed here, that's small t, small e, capital R, small m, small t, t, o, e. That's the output of my this question. So this is how we solve this question related to strings. Okay, next is question number six, which is based on random numbers. Here we have taken a constant, max, which is initially three. And then here you have some possible set of values. So here number is 50 plus random max. Now max is 3. So random max will give me 0, 1 or 2. If I add it to 50, that means the number could be 50 plus 0. I can get 50 in number or I can get 51 in number or I can get 52 in number. So these are the three possible values I can get in the variable number. Then we have a loop which starts from number and the condition is p greater than or equal to 50 and we are printing p over here and p is going in decreasing order. Since we have only three values, I can pick all of them and see what output it gives me. So if p is 50, greater than or equal to 50 is true. It comes here and prints 50 hash. So it prints 50 hash, then it becomes 49 and the condition is false it should stop. But we don't have 50 hash as any of the answers here. Okay, so we leave this. Then it's 51. If it starts from 51, so it will come here and prints 51 hash. Fine, we have this one, 51 hash. Then P decreases and becomes 50. 50 greater than or equal to 50 is true, so it prints 50 hash. Yes, it's there in option 4. Then it becomes 49 and the condition becomes false. So we see that this could be the possible output. Then we have 52. So if it starts from 52, I should get 52 hash, 51 hash, 50 hash, but that's not there in the possible outputs. We can't have one because it starts from 53 and 53 is not there in one of the possible values for number. And we can't have option 2 and option 3 because both of these are printing numbers in increasing order, whereas my loop is working in decreasing order. So I can't have numbers in increasing order over here. So the answer is option number four is the possible output of this code. I hope you understood how to solve this using the random function. Okay, then comes your question number seven, which is again string. I should say that you should try doing it once of your own. So pause the video, try solving it once of your own, and then just resume the video to see whether your output is correct or not. But I'll explain you how to solve this over here. So we have the string which has good logic in this. And as we know, the first position is 0. So G is at position 0. Then we have O at 1. Then another O at 2. Then D at 3. And then 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And at 11, you have null. So we have in total 11 characters in the string. So it starts from here, int i is 0, line 0 not equal to null, okay, line 0 is g which is not equal to null, it's true. We come in over here and we check if it's not is alpha, but g is alpha. So it's true for is alpha, not makes it false, that means we go for else if. So we go to else if and it checks if it is lower, no, g is capital, it's not lower, so we come to the else part. And here it's written line i is equal to line i plus 1. So this was the thing which I was explaining you in the previous string question. That if you have plus 1 inside, I will not increase g as an alphabet. Rather, I have to pick the character from the next position. 
like i is right now 0. So it is in the square brackets i plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So this whole thing becomes line 1. Line 1 is O, which I am putting at line I, which is line 0. So your G is overwritten and at the place of G, I get O. That is the character in the next position. So this is how you have to change here. Then I becomes 1. At line 1, we have small O, which is not equal to null. Is alpha gives true but not makes it false. So we go to else if is lower yes o is lower and over here it's line i plus one plus one is outside the square brackets means i have to pick the next character in the series so it's m n o p so we get p after o so this o will be changed to p since o was lowercase the p will also be in lowercase then again i increases becomes two at two again we have o which is not which is an alphabet so this condition is false it is lower so this condition is true and it again changes to small p then i have d d is at position three line three is not equal to null true this condition is false it comes here d is small yes d is small so we have to increase it by one so a b c d e so instead of d i should get e in the string Okay, then I increases becomes 4. At 4, we have at the rate sign, which is not null, true. But now, is alpha gives me false because at the rate is not an alphabet. So, at the rate sign is not an alphabet. So, this gives false, not makes it true. That means we get in over here and line 4 becomes the dollar sign. So, your M percent, uh, your at, at the rate sign is converted to a dollar sign. So, it changes like this. Then we have capital L at position 5, which is not null. This condition is false. It comes here. It's not lower. So this one is also false. It comes here. So L will be changed to the next character in the string. That is capital O. Then we move on to the next position, which is capital O. This condition is true. This is false. It's not lower. So this one is also false. This one should be executed. As per that, this O should be changed with capital G then similarly since G is also capital so it should be changed with the next letter which is capital I then this I should be changed with capital C this C should be changed with exclamation mark because that's the next character in the string and finally this exclamation sign should be changed with the dollar sign because it's not an alphabet and when it's not an alphabet we put a dollar over there and then it becomes null so we stop so this is your final output of this question that's small o small p small p e dollar capital o g i c exclamation dollar so this is the output of the code which changes the value of the string based on different conditions so it's simple, just keep checking all the conditions for each and every character one by one and you get the final output. Okay, okay, let's say one more question for this particular video. That's question number eight. So question number eight is a very simple question. It's a very easy concept. That is the difference between post and pre-increment. So as we know, when we have post increment, we use the value but increase it afterwards. And if you have pre-increment or decrement we first increase or decrease and then we use the value excuse me now in this example we have first as 25 second as 30 this loop works twice so when i is 1 it comes inside the loop and it prints output is equal to output 1 so uh, not so good in writing like this but still so it prints output 1 is equal to okay now first plus plus so it's a post increment thing so first will be printed which is 25 but internally in the memory it becomes 26 so it prints 25 on the screen but internally in the variable it becomes 26 because it's post increment then it's printing second plus 5 Second is 30, 
So 30 plus 5, friends, 35. But it does not modify the variable second. So whatever is there in second, it remains the same. But the increase value is printed on the screen because it's not written second is equal to second plus 5. It's just second plus 5. Then comes the second line, output 2. So here we'll have output 2 equal to minus minus second. So second is still 30. Minus minus will decrease it and make it 29 and then print it because it's pre-decrement. So first it will decrease and then it will get printed. So it prints 29, then it prints the ampersand sign and then it's written first minus 5. Now first became 26 in the last statement. So 26 minus 5 will be 21. So it prints 21, but it will not change the value of first. It will just print the result of the subtraction, but it will not change the value of variable first. It will still remain 26. Then the loop works again. So i becomes 2, 2 less than equal to 2 is true. Now output is equal to, output 1 is equal to first plus plus. The previous value of output 1 was 26. So it prints 26 here, but in the memory, the variable becomes 27, but it prints 26 because it's post increment. And then we have second plus 5. So second became 29. 29 plus 5 will print 34, but second will remain 29 only. So when you go to the next statement, minus minus second will print 28 because it was 29. So if I decrease it by 1, it becomes 28 and then finally we have to print first minus 5 so that was 27 after the increment in the memory 27 minus 5 will be 22 so this will be the output for this question so increment decrement is quite a simple thing but it might be a bit complicated sometimes but in this question it was quite simple so when it is Post increment, you just print the value and increase it later in the memory. When it is pre, so you decrease it first and then print it. And always remember, when it is written second plus 5 or first minus 5, but there is no equal to sign, so it calculates and prints the thing, but the value in the memory is not modified. It remains the same. You have to use the same in the next statement. So this is how we solve increment decrement thing. Okay, and this is a question regarding random function. You have to tell what will be the possible output. So this question I'm leaving for you. You have to solve it of your own. And in the next video, we will be discussing this and many more output questions. So if you understood how to solve these output questions, do like the video and share with your classmates and do subscribe to the channel. So keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.